Hi, and welcome back. So researchers recently published in Physical Review X that they've discovered certain compounds that can now double the efficiency of CERT-3 in the processing of NAD. The researchers begin their paper by noting that most drugs administered to people are geared towards inhibition of particular enzymes, and that's in order to treat a disease. In this case, however, the goal is the opposite. It's to boost the function of an enzyme, thereby boosting a healthy phenotype rather than battling a diseased one. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD, is a coenzyme that's found in all of our living cells. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Now, NAD is a dinucleotide, which means it consists of two nucleotides joined through their phosphate group. One nucleotide contains an adenine base and the other contains nicotinamide. Sirtuins are enzymes that have been heavily investigated in the past in context to the aging process. Now, they rely on NAD to function, and these researchers describe them as being critical regulators of cellular pathways that are related to, indeed, aging. Upregulating sirtuins has been found in previous work to extend the lifespan of mammals. However, most methods of using drugs to boost the sirtuins has relied on allosteric activation, the chemical process that relies on an existing substrate that might be limited in its quantity. Obviously, as the sirtuins rely on NAD, there has been much work in the past directly influencing that instead. Now, these researchers noted two problems with that approach. Because it's a common aspect of metabolism, boosting NAD across the board may result in broad side effects. Also, converting it into NADH relies on delivering it into cells that have already been fully functioning internal mechanisms, which, in the context of aging, is very much far from guaranteed. So, in this study, the researchers wanted the sirtuins to do more with less, to continue to function adequately, even when NAD was diminished. This, the researchers describe, is a tricky thing to do, while allosteric activators fundamentally rely on existing evolved mechanisms. Attempting to modulate these enzymes is similar to designing a completely new enzyme right from the beginning. Also, they needed a compound that works all of the time, a steady state activator, as it were. Previous work has created compounds that inhibit rather than activate the sirtuins most of the time. This resulted in them performing only their desired functions under certain conditions. Now, CERT-3 was chosen as a target for two specific reasons. The first is that it's known to have beneficial effects on our mitochondria. Previous studies have shown that benefits of NAD against mitochondrial dysfunction are all due to CERT-3 activation. The second is that natural mutations in CERT-3 genes are connected to longevity. Using an advanced algorithm, the researchers searched their library of 1.2 million compounds, and they started with honokiol. This compound only activates CERT-3 under certain conditions. The researchers were able to find compounds that do steady state and non-steady state activation with which they then refined their experiments even further with a close and detailed examination of the specific biochemistry that was involved. They were specifically looking for compounds that have strong bonds to certain amino acids on the CERT3 protein. This initial work, however, was all done in computers. So to verify their findings, they administered their compounds to CERT3 in a substrate. Now, while a lot of this type of work normally uses fluorescent labeling, the authors avoided this approach. They thought it might have effects on the results. One particularly strong compound, that being 5689785, was identified as being a plausible drug after this screening process. The researchers tested their new candidate against a control group, those being Honokiol and the well-known NAD precursor, NMN. In nearly all cases, 5689785 performed favorably against the alternatives. Now, administering nicotinamide, that's NAM, to cells normally inhibits NAD enzyme activity. But 5689785 was able to restore it in a way that Honokiol could not. So what's next? 
Well, this is not a drug yet, and it's still not been formulated in a way that it can be consumed by living organisms, which mean no animal studies have been completed to date. What the researchers have is an initial compound with which to continue the process of drug development. The goal was to prove that it is indeed possible to directly enhance the activity of sirtuins without relying on a substrate-based method. If this approach sees success in animal models, it could certainly pave the way for drugs that, due to SIRT3's mitochondrial effects, may well be able to fight multiple aspects of aging. So, interesting times ahead. Personally, I would have preferred a supplement. Drugs will be far more expensive, and as a result, their accessibility will be denied to those who cannot afford them. Also, there's no way to clinically test with a control group and a placebo group that this is actually an anti-aging drug. So much like me using NMN, it's an educated guess with a calculated risk. So let me know in the comments below, would you consider taking this new NAD boosting drug?